In this episode, we'll talk about the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro HDMI and SDI wireless video transmitter system. Now, first of all, this system is a five gigahertz system. That means it uses the five gigahertz frequency range to transmit video. And you have both SDI and HDMI inputs and outputs. I think they call this the 400S Pro because it's actually still in their consumer line if you go to their website, but it's a little bit more pro leaning from the standpoint that it can also take HDMI and SDI input, not just HDMI. In addition to that, it can transmit up to 1080p, 60 frames per second, and one of the headline features here is that the latency is significantly lower than it was on some of the older consumer line wireless transmitter from Hollyland at 0.08 seconds. So you're not getting a lot of additional latency from this wireless system. It's all gonna be on your camera or on your monitor. Now, if you're transmitting to the receiver that comes with the kit, you can go up to 400 feet distance in terms of transmission distance. And then if you're transmitting to an app on your phone or on your tablet, you can transmit up to 300 feet from the specs. We'll take a look at our distance tests later. The app that you use to transmit the video image to your mobile phone can work for iOS and Android. And the overall kit comes in at $649 US at the time of this review. Now let's run through a couple things. First of all, an indoor distance test and then an outdoor distance test. On our indoor test, we did this just in my home here. Now it's still a pandemic, so I haven't had a chance to use this on any narrative films or anything else like that. So I've really had to do the testing here around my house. I was really interested in understanding how well it would go through barriers. That's one of the limitations of five gigahertz is it tends to have a harder time making its way through walls and things of that nature. What we found in our indoor distance test was it worked really, really well. I didn't have any sort of even beginning of a flicker of a dropout until I went through two separate doors and approximately, I would say, 150 to 200 feet away. So it did really surprisingly well from my standpoint. On the outdoor test, we also have very good results. Again, I walked about 400 feet away, did not experience any dropouts until I went around a corner. So I had the camera sitting up by a kind of a corner of my house. Once I went around that corner so there was no more line of sight at 400 feet, that's when it first dropped out. Other than that, we were able to keep a signal no problem at all. And that's even if I turned away from the camera where the transmitter was so that I was at least between the receiver and the transmitter. So again, overall, in terms of connectivity, it's really simple to set up and it seems to hold a signal really, really well, just as advertised. Now, latency is one of the challenges when you're doing a wireless system and there are a variety of factors there. Your camera, especially if you're using HDMI, has some latency and by the term latency, what I mean is there's some delay. So you can see here in some of our tests, you're definitely still seeing some latency, but this latency is produced primarily by the camera itself, especially when you're doing the HDMI output, but, and it gets a little bit lower when you're using SDI, but it's especially this particular monitor. This is an original Atomos Shogun, the very first 4K recorder they produced, and there's a fair bit of latency in that. So you're still gonna get some latency depending on which camera you're using and which monitor you're using, but it won't be your wireless system that's contributing a whole lot to that latency. So that's good news. In terms of resolution and frame rates, this can transmit up to 1080p and up to 60 frames per second. So there is one thing that was a little bit odd about this that could affect some of you, and that is that it only transmits at integer frame rates. So if you're shooting, for example, on your camera 23.976, it's actually transmitting 24 frames per second. And I mean 24 exact. So same with 29.97, it's actually transmitting 30 and all of the others. So it, it's always going to round to an even number. Now, where that could be a problem for my particular use case is I was hoping to use this for live streaming, and I still will be able to do that. But you have to have some sort of frame rate converter if some of your other cameras will be at different frame rates. So for example, I'm typically going to live stream at 29.97 because that's what YouTube seems to do best with. But if I use this wireless camera, it's going to be transmitting at 30 frames per second. Now, with an ATEM Mini Pro, for example, no problem. It has a frame rate converter. But if you're using a more traditional switcher, a lot of those don't have frame rate converters built into them. So you will have to add a frame rate converter to get everything back in sync for your live stream. 
In terms of build quality, this is top notch. Everything is pretty much metal. The only exception are the antennas. The antennas are made out of plastic. They have SMA connectors. The great thing is they have SMA connectors, so you can attach them or detach them and replace them if you need to. So I think they've really done a nice job in terms of build quality. It feels really solid. I think for $650, you're definitely getting your money's worth, at least in terms of build quality. Great thing here is that this is a system that can kind of flex between consumer-oriented cameras and professional cameras as well. You have both SDI and HDMI inputs and outputs. You don't, however, have any sort of pass-through. So you don't have the ability, for example, on the camera to send your HDMI to the transmitter and then send an output from there to the monitor on your camera. So you're going to have to do it probably the inverse. Hopefully your monitor has a pass-through. But if you need to attach both, you're going to need to take that into account and make sure that you're working with a monitor that does have a pass-through. Really good news in terms of power on the Mars 400S Pro. First of all, there are different types of power sources. You can use Sony L-series batteries. These are the NPF batteries. And in fact, in our test here, we use the Sony NPF 970. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. You also have a locking DC barrel that'll take between 6 and 16 volts. So you could potentially, for example, get a feed from a cinema battery via DTAP and bring that in here to power the transmitter. And you can also power via USB-C. There's a USB-C port, both for the transmitter and the receiver, and that can be powered with anywhere between 5 and 12 volts. So even just a standard USB battery bank could power this as well. Great set of options there. Really impressive. Now, with the Sony NPF 970 battery, I was able to get 10 hours and 28 minutes. Now, note that the limiting factor is generally going to be your transmitter. That's what's going to use the most power at about 11 watts. And so I was able to get 10 hours and 28 minutes on a single NPF 970 battery, which kind of blew my mind. That's much more than I expected. Really good performance there. Now, one thing that's interesting is once you get a more powerful transmission system like the Mars 400S Pro, there is a fan in both the transmitter and the receiver. I was a little dismayed at first. I thought, oh, great, another fan on set. The last thing we need for sound is another fan. Well, first of all, these are very quiet. And secondly, if you are doing a really critical shot where the camera has to be up very, very close to the talent, you can temporarily turn that fan off to get that shot. So it gives you some options there. Very much appreciated from a soundy perspective. Now, there is an app, again, as I mentioned before, for both iOS and Android, to which you can transmit the video image. Now, there are some kind of nuances in terms of how many you can transmit to, depending on what you're doing. So if you are not using the included receiver, you can transmit up to four mobile devices at the same time. And if you are using the included receiver, you can transmit up to two mobile devices in addition to the receiver that comes with the kit. So just important to keep that in mind if you you know, we're planning to use that mobile transmission ability, and you do have some limitations there. One other cool thing about the app is that you can use the app to update the firmware on both the transmitter and the receiver. Pretty nice touch there. Now, this is one thing I have a little bit of mixed feeling about. To use the app, you do have to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot that the transmitter and the receiver themselves create. So that means you cannot be connected to another Wi-Fi network at the same time little bit of a downside. So if you're on a production set and you are going to transmit to mobile devices, I would say you probably need to plan on not using other apps to control other things like lights, sound mixers, anything else that you would use on set to control with your mobile device. I, I would not plan on doing that because it's going to be a pain to switch back and forth between different Wi-Fi networks to make those work. But on the other hand, if you have a dedicated tablet, for example, that you're just going to use for monitoring the video signal, it's a really nice option to have. The OLED screen on both the transmitter and the receiver is very viewable both indoors and out, so they did a nice job on that. It's very easy to read, gives you simple information that's really useful. One of the things I appreciate too about it is that the battery status is given to you in volts. Now, people that are used to like little battery status meters may be like, what? What am I supposed to do with the voltage? <laughs> voltage is actually really helpful because you're never guessing about you know, what half means on a meter or what a quarter means on a meter. You know with experience what the voltage will generally be. So for example, with an NPF battery, once you get down to about six volts, it's done. So you can keep your eye on it that way. So I actually appreciate that kind of approach to battery status. I really like the simple menus that are on both the transmitter and receiver. You barely have to get into them under very few circumstances. And they're super simple. 
there's not a lot of learning that you're going to have to do or special button combinations that you're going to have to learn, which I appreciate as well, because there's so many different pieces of gear on set. You don't have to learn all these kind of really nuanced little kind of funky hold these two buttons to accomplish such and such. This doesn't have any of that super easy. One kind of unique feature is that it has the ability to create an RTSP stream. Now, if you don't understand what that's for, typically what you would use that for is to transmit from the receiver to some other remote viewing monitor over an ethernet network. So what that does is you have to connect a USB to ethernet dongle to the receiver. Then that ethernet cable needs to go to an ethernet switch or could go directly to a computer, for example, where you could monitor the stream coming out of the receiver. So that's something that could be really useful as well. Now, not something I had everything I needed to actually test that here, but kind of an interesting feature. Getting the transmitter and the receiver to pair, very simple. It actually came paired out of the box, but if you need to pair, simple menu option. It runs through the process, figures out which channel is going to work best for the particular location that you're at, and sets itself up really easy. One factor that I'm finding over time is pretty important as well is that support from the company can be really critical. If something breaks, I don't know what the experience with Hollyland is going to be like. So if you're not in China, I'm not sure what that experience is going to be like. Overall, the Mars 400S Pro seems like a really good wireless transmission system. It kind of straddles the kind of consumer and prosumer or even pro level range. I think it's a lot less expensive than you would find. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, $650, that's really, really expensive. And yeah, if you're just self-funding everything, that doesn't make sense. But if you are getting paid, this is like a really inexpensive option that works really, really surprisingly well. So in the past, if you had to go buy a Teradek system for, you know, the same thing for $2,000 basically is what you'd be looking at. $650 seems like a really fair price. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.